Did you know certain commonly accepted words and phrases in the English language are no longer acceptable even if they were in the past? Let's have a look at five of those words that are no longer commonly accepted. Okay, so I want to start this video off with two disclaimers. Number one is that it is important to know which words and terms or phrases you can and cannot use in a language in terms of social acceptance because you do not want to be misunderstood or accidentally use something that could be offensive. So that is the reason that it is important to understand what is commonly accepted and what is considered socially acceptable. Now two disclaimers. Number one, this is not a video about being woke or choosing politically correct terms over more historically used terms. This is a video meant for English language learners who may be learning English through old movies or classic literature, and they don't know the nuances of language and they don't understand how language has changed over time. And as a result, you may be learning English with outdated materials and you may be using some words or phrases that are no longer considered acceptable. So that's what this video is about, to help you not get into a situation where you are misunderstood or accidentally using a word that you really shouldn't be using. And that is number one. And number two is this is not my personal opinion. These are things that in general, uh, as a society in an English speaking uh, country, these terms have been deemed unacceptable. So basically you wouldn't go into a Senate meeting or into a business and hear somebody using these words or terms anymore. Whereas in the past, they were completely normal and used regularly. Whether they should have been is a different question, but they were used and it was not considered a bad thing to do in the past. So that is where the difference lies. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first phrase here, I will put them on the screen, is Indian style. Indian style. This is a way of sitting. I will insert a picture here so you can see what I mean. And for example, when I was a child in elementary school, it was very, very normal for me to hear a teacher or another child say in class, please sit Indian style or let's sit Indian style. That is where you cross your legs. And that is commonly used in classrooms to help you know, get the children to sit in an orderly fashion and in a way that doesn't take a lot of space. However, where, why it was called this, um, I'm not exactly sure, but I need to explain two things about it. By Indian, they don't mean people from the country India, they mean Native Americans. So indigenous people who are native to the geographic land of America. So that is who they are referring to. And honestly, it is considered offensive to say Indian style, uh, not just because they're being misrepresented as Indian people versus Native American people. But I mean, why would you need to call a way of sitting a way of these people sit this way? So basically, the term that has replaced it now is cross-legged or sitting crisscross. You may hear some primary school teachers nowadays asking their kids to sit crisscross applesauce. And that is the term uh, cross-legged or sitting crisscross or with your legs crossed that you will hear in classrooms today. Okay, number two is another phrase and this is the peanut gallery peanut gallery. So you would definitely hear this in maybe older films or books. Um, this used to be the area of a theater, like the top back row in the balconies. These were the cheapest seats, the least expensive seats, and it was also the area that uh, black people, African Americans, it was the area that they were restricted to. So they were not allowed to sit in better seats. They had to sit up there. So the peanut gallery were um, people who could not afford better seats and people of color. So basically the term does not only refer to the part of the theater, but it became used in slang, American English slang. I'm not sure about British English, but American English for sure. It became commonly used as a way to say, oh, look at what the peanut gallery is saying, meaning people who are 
unimportant giving their opinions, that they are sitting there and judging you even though they aren't important and their opinions don't matter. And by saying that, you're discriminating, honestly, against the people who in the olden days would sit in the peanut gallery, which were poor people and people of color. So a lot of times people hear that term, the peanut gallery, and they have no idea about the origins of it, and they don't realize that they are actually saying something discriminatory and racist. Um, but of course, as society evolves and languages evolve, um, it has become now socially unacceptable to say that phrase. And I do want to point out, since I didn't at the beginning of the video, um, that just because somebody uses one of these words or phrases, it doesn't mean that they are impolite or that they are racist or uh, discriminatory, they most likely, most likely do not realize that it is an offensive term or they don't know the origins of it. Um, I should actually make a disclaimer, which I did not do at the beginning of the video, but I have used all five of these terms when I was younger uh, because they were still in my childhood. Uh, in some social circles, they were considered acceptable. So I, as a child, didn't know the origins and I used all five of these at some point in my life, not realizing um, what they actually meant and the origins of them. Of course, since finding that out, I have not used them and I don't use them. Um, there are some that were harder to stop using than others. Uh, so uh, I've probably had some slip ups here and there but not with an ill intention. So that's important to recognize that just because somebody uses one of these words or terms, it doesn't make them a bad person, um, but they either are unaware or it's a habit that's hard to break and they don't actually believe these things. However, if somebody did not grow up with these words and terms being used around them a lot, and they know the origin of them and the meaning of them, and they still choose to use them, that's a different story. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to number three. This is along the same lines. You heard me say earlier, people of color or African American people. And the word or phrase that those two options replace is colored, colored people. Uh, one of my all-time favorite books is Vivian Lee's Gone with the Wind. It is an American literature classic that is set in the Confederate United States, the Confederate South. Well, I guess it wasn't the United States, the Confederate South, um, in mostly in Georgia, but a little bit in some of the other states as well. And what's important um, to note is the context and the time of the book. But there, the uh, slaves are uh, often or always referred to as colored people or even worse. There are other words that are even worse that I won't even mention in this video. Um, but that is something that is referred to over and over in the book, and we do not say that anymore. People of color or um, African American, if you know their origin or something along those lines, is uh, very different because it's simply stating a fact about them. Whereas if you say colored people, there is a long history that is negative and referring to people who have lower value than you, as well as slaves. And that's just not okay in 2023 and in the future, it will still not be okay. So we know better and we do better. Okay, the next one, I will absolutely not say this word, and I only said it maybe a handful of times when I was eight or nine years old because I heard other people using it, um, but once people told me actually what it truly meant, um, I stopped using it. Um, that's this word here, the R word I'll refer to it as. So a person is a hmm, or a person can be referred to as this. Um, this is referring to people who uh, have a disability. Uh, so in the U.S., they switched um, somewhere, I think, around the early 2000s to saying handicapped. Um, but that's also considered not so polite anymore. So the safest uh, term to use, in my opinion, is disabled. Um, there are woke people who will say that disabled people or a disability is also not correct. Um, from what I've seen, I don't see it as anything offensive. And when I use that, I certainly am not doing it to cause offense. Um, so I'm not convinced that it is offensive to say a disabled person or a person with a disability. Um, that is generally the most common term or phrase 
when it is necessary to point that out or refer to that group of people um, to refer to them that way. Um, but there are other options as well, so you can Google and explore on your own, but just never use this R word that I put on the screen earlier. It is completely unacceptable and not okay to use. Okay, and this last one refers to a group of people. This is the word. It is pronounced jip. That is the first part of the word gypsy. So these uh, are refers to a group of people. Um, I think mostly it's from regions of Romania, um, but they're, they're considered like homeless, uh, traveling nomads. And um, it's a group of people that don't really have a home and they travel around. And this cultural group has really gotten a lot of bad stereotypes attached to them and as a result I guess because of the stereotypes I'm not saying that they're true or anything like that but as a result of the negative stereotypes this word which is used as a verb to jip someone um, is basically to say that you're getting cheated or you're getting swindled so let's say for example if you order uh, a sundae and you have to pay extra for the whipped cream and maybe you order some extra sprinkles and you have to pay extra for that. So instead of paying the original four dollars you paid five dollars and twenty five cents. Um, you pay your five twenty five, you wait for your Sunday to be made and then they bring it to you and there is very only a very small bit of whipped cream and there are no sprinkles even though you paid for the full serving of whipped cream and you paid for extra sprinkles to be added to it then somebody may say, I've been gypped, you gypped me. So basically you're getting less than what you paid for or you're getting a quality or service or a product that is worth less than what it should be. Um, and it's basically about getting swindled and it being intentional, not accidental. Um, this is absolutely not okay. You should not say that I got gypped. Uh, what you could say is um, I was unfairly served or I was underserved um, or you don't even need to make it a verb. You can just simply say um, I was not provided with the thing that I paid for or that I should have been provided with. You, you don't need to make it an accusation in that way. Um, and it, when you do that, it's because you are trying to elicit basically a response saying that you were wronged and the person who wronged you is a bad person, so I'm going to insult them now. So we don't say that that way. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to see more like this, please let me know in the comments below. And before anyone in the comments says anything about, oh, these are all about minority people, um, there are examples of terms uh, for Caucasian people, white people, such as myself, my light skin, that um, were used in the past that were not okay and are no longer considered acceptable. But those have gone all out of fashion. I can't think of any socially acceptable words against Caucasian people that are commonly used today. Um, so I can give you some examples of those as well if you would like to see that in a future video. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!